Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the MyTech booth. My name is Benjamin Tabalt. I am the principal of BIM in design services with MyTech. I am an architect with about 22 years of experience designing in commercial and residential construction. And I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Eric, to introduce himself. And the topic for discussion today is harnessing the power of 3D design in home building. Welcome, everyone. Thanks, Ben. I'm Eric Gibson. I'm the product portfolio manager of our builder software portfolio here at MyTech. And we're excited about the innovations that we are making in the software realm. Ben and I are going to talk today a little bit about how harnessing the power of 3D really makes a difference in our design. We want to first talk about the evolution of design. Now, when we think about design and what the design intent is, is that we really want to capture what are we trying to achieve as we build before it's actually built in the field. And the way to, do, uh, to convey that intent has taken different forms over many, many years. And the first paper plans were done in 10,000 BC, where they were actually conveyed in paper, right? And then that evolved over the years, but they, they had a problem, right? They couldn't copy it very easily. So blueprinting was invented in 1861 to actually enable the ability to copy plans and have several different people see what was going to happen. Well, we see that uh, computer technology, as that evolved, really helped speed up and innovate that. So computer-aided drafting was invented in 1957, and then as computers evolved, more and more software were developed. We see that AutoCAD wrote their 2D AutoCAD program in 1982, and then a few years later had 3D, and now today we're experiencing 3D CAD programs such as Revit, which has been around for about 22 years. And as this evolves, we get more and more into being able to use these 3D models to harness that design power and convey it to more and more people with a higher level of accuracy. And so we want to talk about that evolution from 3D into BIM. And I think the, the phenomenal thing to discuss here is, as Eric pointed out, we've been doing the same thing over and over for over 10,000 years, if you think about it. And we get to live in the age within the last 100 years that not only has it evolved, but it continues to rapidly expand with that technological improvement ability. And it's an exciting thing to try to I, the only way I can explain it is keep up with it yes. because it seems every day something new is out there and it's always a value. What's the risk? What's the reward? What, what benefits me to do this versus am I chasing a, a, something that's not going to be beneficial to me down the line as we move forward? Yeah. So when we talk about the idea of a 2D versus 3D, what, what, what we really are talking about is for the first time, 3D allows you to have a collaborative massing process. You're no longer drawing a floor plan with a disconnected elevation and a disconnected section, disconnected detailing, and then when a change occurs, you have to remember to go to all those locations to update to make sure that you have consistent quality drawings without discrepancies. And I actually started my career as an architect doing commercial projects in 2D. So I lived through that frustration of if I have a complex design and a change occurs, tracking down every evolution of that change because nothing is going to communicate and collaborate with itself and then hoping that you didn't miss a spot because the one spot you miss is the spot the builder is going to pick up in the field and say, wait a second, this doesn't work. So the, for the first time when we considered 3D design, you have the capability, your drawings now, your plans, your sections, your elevations are really slices and views of a digital model to the point where as we get into more 3D and especially in the BIM as we discuss, um, it's more, I, I call people that are in the programs virtual contractors instead of drafters. You are building the building virtually in the computer to realize opportunities, identify discrepancies, and hopefully do that in the design phase so it doesn't run into change orders in the field. Yeah. Yeah. And as we see the transition from 2D to 3D, we can mirror that parallel with the evolution of technology in our day. You know, when CAD was first developed in 1957, people did not have computers. Right, even when AutoCAD was written in 1982, um, a personal computer, no, people couldn't afford it, right? So we've seen that evolution where computing power has increased and the price has dropped so that more and more people are exposed to it and can use it. And then we see the uh, adoption of that in construction happen along that path. Now, as um, MyTech started out in software development in the late 80s of designing and engineering trusses, 
we actually created our first 3D software in 1992. So MyTech has been at this you know, for 30 some years of creating 3D software. And when you look at the residential construction market, it really is the component manufacturer has been designing in 3D for many, many decades. While the architectural plans may still have been in 2D, the truss design, the wall panel design, that was done in 3D because those objects were very complicated and needed 3D design to understand how the connections were made and how that geometry came together. Yeah, and I think um, a, a, a mic drop moment for me was um, I didn't realize that as an architect. I always would just receive the 2D truss layouts and then the 2D profiles and take hour upon hour of checking against my design. So I remember in 2015 going to a truss plant because I had a rather complex design and I wanted to make sure that we were collaborating. That's the first time I saw Sapphire on the screen. I said, time out. You guys are in 3D? And they said, absolutely. I said, well, we need to collaborate. So we found a way to export out that 3D and mesh it in with what I was doing at Revit at the time. And it radically transformed what we were doing. It allowed us in minutes to identify issues of harmony or discrepancy of collision. Um, we could clean up things in a matter of seconds with screenshots. It was no longer a manual process. But through that fact, that is a huge benefit just in itself of 3D. But it is still not BIM. And a lot of people use the term BIM, I'm using BIM, but really all they're doing is 3D modeling. So we wanted to explore the additional benefits of BIM as we move into it. So when we talk BIM, what does BIM do that the 3D design doesn't provide? If you think of 3D as that massing, I have the ability to understand how things are connecting. Are they collaborating? Are they colliding? Are they having that issue? BIM really adds the informational value. So I have an object in 3D. BIM says, I can tell you what that material is. I can tell you how it performs structurally, thermally, if it's sustainable. I can put that into an environment and simulate how it works well, how the sun hits it, how it thermally performs, all of that additional data. And that is how we begin to take 3D into a realm of what I would consider simulation and really helping to understand whether it's an individual part of a building project or it's its building as a whole, how does the information, what does that unpack and allow us to go well beyond the 3D into the other dimensions of BIM? Yeah, yeah. hey Ben, so we understand that right, BIM is much more than 3D. And there's a, a couple of terms that help us understand that. One is that breaking this down into the seven dimensions of BIM, you know, it's not just the third dimension. Within the seven dimensions of BIM, we look at this here that, that the first couple of three is really that conceptual, right? Where is that starting with an idea? And then that may become a napkin drawing or something in 2D, but then that grows and evolves and you have more people involved that you get to that 3D massing as Ben explains, that you're starting to have that take shape and see how it interacts with other objects and that massing. But then we go beyond 3D in those other dimensions where the fourth dimension is time where typically a construction project, the scheduling, you know, that's done separate from the 3D model. But what we want to do is look at that 3D model and talk about how is this going to be constructed and what's the time that's going to go into that. And it's not just the schedule, but it's the sequencing of events, right? Because it's the proper understanding of what happens before something else and how they interact. And when we're looking at that 3D model to really be the source of information for the schedule, it becomes much more accurate. Then in the fifth dimension, that's where we're really looking at cost, that we are moving past what we have as a traditional estimating, right? Where we're just calculating some ge geometric number and having some price formula associated to that, where a 3D model gives us accurate material list, accurate bill of materials, which we can then price. And we're no longer estimating or guessing, we're actually getting true costs. Then we get into 60, which is looking at that energy, right? Where, where is this building located and which way is it oriented that we can properly calculate the energy usage, the carbon footprint, things of that nature within 60 for sustainability. What does it take to transport uh, all the construction materials there? And then C70 is really that lifetime management. What happens after construction is over and the owners take possession and then how are they going to maintain that 
over the time lifespan of the building is really getting into that and you can use that that three-dimensional model all to do that modeling and understanding from that point on and harnessing the ability to do this in the design phase allows you not only to unlock, okay, what, what is this building doing now, but what opportunities, now that I have this data, do I have for optimization? How can I help this perform better? Because I can simulate it before it's built, and I can improve upon it before it's actually manifested because I have the, the ability of this data. So let's talk through BIM within project delivery. And one of the th ways that we talk about is, and I kind of alluded to, having more information earlier on allows you to make decisions earlier on in the process. The traditional process, and I'm guilty of doing it before, is coordinate and field by others. Because you haven't collaborated, you haven't connected, so you're going to say, you know what, it's, this is going to be figured out later on. Which traditionally means change orders, costs, delays, challenges, time, you name it. So what we have in the industry is we've identified an integrated project delivery. And what that really says is because of this information we have, we have complete capabilities of understanding, simulating, analyzing, and executing opportunity and adjustments within the design phase. So then, what does build really become? It becomes just a manifestation of that with confidence that we have simulated and we have our best possible product that we're pushing out into the market. And uh, Eric, if you would uh, talk through the ability of the costs and the, the design yeah. changes as part of that process. Now we know with this uh, example of different design methods, right, that there's these two lines and that as we go through the design process into construction into the field, our ability to impact the costs decreases drastically. Right, because the project is ongoing and that ability decreases over time. But then the cost of changes increase over time. So when we look at that, we have a very high ability in the beginning in the 2D, 3D design, in the design phase, to really impact the costs and make that a very uh, optimized design. And the cost of making changes is very low. So with this uh, integrated project delivery, we really want to do all that we can in this area and avoid making changes in the field because that's when our ability really to make changes is decreased and the cost drastically increases. And as part of that process, we, we all around the booth, you'll see examples of we believe better building is through advanced componentization and doing more and more offsite. And again, the ability to collaborate with componentization and realize the benefits and work that into the design, we believe is an enhanced version of integrated project delivery. Because you can have integrated project delivery with typical stick, stick yeah. framing and just engage with the typical um, you know, value chain partners within that design. But when you bring those component individuals your CM specialists in. I've had examples where they've come in and said, Ben, if you shift this wall six inches, you go from three ply to two ply on your girder, that'll save you $2,500. Yeah. My structural engineer is not going to inform me of that. This is when we engage with offsite specialists to realize what kit of parts can we create. And furthermore, how can my architecture optimize to allow for a streamlined make and build process? And then how is that more repeatable, uh, more effective, less waste, and it improves the entire process as we move forward. So as we're doing this, oh, another experience that you can see, and I'll be manning the booth after this presentation, is our virtual solution. And what we want to do is give every opportunity for transparency and visibility to all of our customers into what we would consider a single source of truth model. And in order for a single source of truth model to exist, you have to engage with all of the value partners and all of the individuals. A single source truth of model is not me as an architect redesigning a structural system. It's me engaging with the component manufacturer and utilizing their data because that's connected to the plant that's actually going to produce the components themselves. It's then also allowing the trades during design to come in and coordinate where the ductwork's going to go to oppose to the plumbing. It's no longer the first trade in at the field wins and then whoever's following along has to make it work. That The fact that we see the exact same house plan and production building being built 10 times, 10 different ways is a problem. And it's a mistake and our builders will communicate that that is a frustration. If we utilize and understand the benefits of 3D and BIM and utilize that during the design phase, it allows us to have that earlier identification, earlier opportunity, and a streamlined build process.
Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. As this transition has been showed into, into VR and then the future of AR. 